Uh, welcome to the Amherst Historical Commission's public meeting on Thursday, October 12th, 2022, based on Governor Baker's executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law signed Thursday, March 12th, 2020. This meeting is being held virtually using the Zoom platform. My name is Janet Marquardt, and as chair of the Amherst Historical Commission, I'm calling this meeting to order at 6.34 p.m. This meeting is being recorded and minutes are being taken. I'll now take a roll call of commissioners in attendance. As you hear your name called, unmute yourself, answer, and then please place yourselves back on mute. Patricia Auth is not here. Robin Fordham. Present. Madeline Helmer. Present. Rebecca Lockwood. Here. Hetty Startup. Here. <laughs> okay, and I'm here. Okay, everybody mute until we get further along. Opportunity for public comment and questions will be provided during the general public comment period later in the agenda. So the first thing on the agenda is a public hearing um, for 332 West Street. So we'll do that first. Do we have a representative to speak to us? Yeah, here? yeah. so the applicant um, himself uh, had to actually leave the country for a family emergency. So um, attorney Tom Reedy is here on the applicant's behalf. Okay. And, um, Hello, and thanks then. for attending. Uh, <laughs> and everyone's looked at the application and the photos. No, yeah, I'm happy to um, share some of the. Becky, it's screen. always online at the document center, which I forgot today and had to ask Ben. You're on mute, so I can't tell what you're saying. Becky, you're on mute. I do oh. always look, but it wasn't there when I looked. So okay. It's okay. Um, okay. Well, Ben can walk us through really quickly. It's a very simple situation. Yeah, yeah, I'm happy to give a little bit of a or overview Tom and then, and then yeah. Tom, you can um, jump in, but I'll just give a little bit of background just because I just uh, described it in my uh, email that the, uh, so it's the barn at 332 West Street. It's the kind of at the, at the intersection of uh, Mount Holyoke Drive and, and West Street. Um, you can see it from 116 and, um, it was the I described in my email that it was the subject of a CPA application uh, in 2017. 2014. Oh, 2014, that far back. Okay. Um, so it's a, uh, you know, it was a historical commission, you know, eight years ago, recognized it as an important um, historical asset for the town. The, the owners approached the town looking for CPA funds to help restore it. The project was funded. Um, however, the owners backed out um, and, and never accepted the grant um, due to the uh, not wanting to take on the preservation restriction. Um, so the barn then kind of laid in its current deteriorating condition for a few more years until the current owner bought it. Um, I don't know exactly when, maybe in the past few years. And um, they are, I can let Tom fill in the details, but my understanding is they're uh, trying to, uh, or they intend to replace the roof on this, built, um, on the barn. And, you know, because of our new bylaw and the age of this structure, it triggered the preservation bylaw because it's, you know, replacing the roof um, and which is considered demolition and it's a significant building. So uh, that's kind of the scope of, you know, what, what we're looking at today for this barn. Um, the existing barn roof material, which I and I don't believe is original to the barn, is this like corrugated tar paper, um, which is I don't think a long term solution for a, for a roof preservation. Uh, and the owner intends to uh, replace it with you know asphalt shingles. So it's a it is a change in appearance. Um, and on it, oops, on it let. Tom, uh, jump in if he has any other details to share. That was great, Ben. So for the record, Tom Reedy, attorney with Bacon Wilson um, out of Amherst here on behalf of Mr. Chow. Yeah, I mean, I think Ben did a great job. It was the the owner is looking to use the barn for storage. And, and so it, it's leaking. It's a dilapidated roof. It's not the original roof. And so he kind of, unbeknownst to him, just, I mean, he started to do the work and then had a conversation, realized, you know, we need to go through this process. And so he's going through this process. Uh, I sent him an email, you know, I talked to Ben before and he said, the commission may want to know what else is 
he's going to do? I said, great question. I asked uh, Mr. Chow, I just haven't heard from him. I think the time difference has somewhat prevented us from actually connecting on that. You know, as I look at it, it looks like maybe windows need to be replaced, maybe some supporting structure on the outside. So it looks like there might be additional work. Um, and so we'd obviously be back before you if if that work was going to be done. But, you know, at this point, I think let's just get the roof taken care of because winter is coming and he's got to get a, a construction super, supervisor licensed contractor out there to complete the work. And it should be done sooner rather than later. And then we can deal with the other yeah. stuff when it comes up. OK, and so he's not planning to turn this into residential units no no, no storage yeah. and if you were to turn into residential use then there's a yeah. whole other process yeah. That we'd have yeah. to go i understand yeah uh does anybody have any comments about the materials robin i was just going to make a note um that was a great um barn assessment that ben uh, distributed <laughs> and um there's a lot of really good information in there about um the damage that at least in 2014 um, was recorded. Um, really great understanding of how the barn uh, was built and then adapted with the smoking shed. And I would really encourage um, the owner to continue to reference that document going forward. Really glad to see this barn, which I, uh, ironically enough, I um, submitted on behalf of the CPA a barn and outbuilding preservation proposal to the CPA community. And this is one of the photos that I used. Um, so, uh, right up our alley to see that it's not that, uh, that the, that the roof is, um, um, being replaced in a positive way to, to preserve the structure. Very happy about that. I wish more barns were being done like this. Yeah. Hetty, you had a comment? Hey, you're on mute, Hetty. Sorry, um, it's more a, a, a question or a concern that the asphalt shingle roof is um, not going to be too heavy for the structural system that is the current barn. I don't think that's likely, but it would be really sad if you put a new asphalt shingle roof on and it, the, it, the building underneath wouldn't hold the weight. So I assume that the contractor will do some kind of evaluation of, of that um, you know, it would definitely apply if it was going to be some kind of stone mm -hmm. covering. Um, but I think that sounds great. Um, Tom, they're removing the old one first, right? Completely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah. you see the pictures of it. So, yeah. and if you drive by, I mean, candidly, the work, you, you see that the work has started and it was more of a stop yeah. work. Let's go through this process and then let's yeah, yeah, sure. start the work. So, so no, I, it's great. It's great. It, I'd imagine that they, the lightest roofs you can put on there. Yeah, and I'd imagine yeah. they'd shore it up from the inside too. I bet okay. they, I bet they're thinking about that. Because to your point, why make an investment if it's only going to collapse? Sure. Yeah. Okay. So, does anyone want to make a motion regarding the application for demolition of the roof? I move that we um, approve the application for demolition of the roof. I second that. Okay. All in favor, I'll take a roll call. Robin. <laughs> I guess you're in favor. Oh yes, yeah, sorry, favor. <laughs> Becky. Having trouble with my internet. Yes. Eddie. Yes. Uh Madeline. Yes. Okay, and I'm in favor. So it passes. So um oh and Pat, you're here. Pat, are you in favor? <laughs> you're in on mute, Pat. Just nod or shake your head. <laughs> I don't think she can. Yes. Okay. She's in favor. Great. It passes. So um, tell him thank you for saving one of our outbuildings in town. And um, we're looking forward to seeing it in spiffy shape. Excellent. I'll let him know. Thanks so much, everyone. Ben, great job sure. as always. Thanks a lot. Okay. Thanks, Tom. Sure. Okay. Next thing announcements. You have any? Um, I was just going to say uh, we didn't take public comment for the public hearing, and there is someone in attendance. Oh, at, uh, oh at, I was thinking my... that was coming later, but yeah, the public hearing is supposed to have... actually we're supposed to vote to close the public hearing too. So public yeah. hearing is still open. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, would someone in the public be ready to comment? Who's who's waiting? Yeah. Um. Is, yeah. Is there any public comment about the 332 West Street? barn application you can click the raise hand button if so um 
All right, yeah, I'll, uh, Mr. Stedman, I'll allow you to talk here. And Bruce, you should be able to uh, unmute now. So I'm a neighbor a couple blocks away. Um, I've observed the reconstruct the beginnings of the reconstruction. Um, mm -hmm. that it's a marvelous thing. Our our only neighborly question was was the and I'm sorry to come in late. I was in a different Zoom meeting and had to come yeah. to this. Um, my only question is whether there's other purposes for the barn once the roof is repaired. Are there other purposes intended? Uh, well, I did ask, uh, and he said it would just be used for storage. And if he changes his mind, he'll have to come back sure. to, to the town. So I think at this point, it's just storage. Okay. Well, it's it's marvelous to see it saved. Mm -hmm. I, I agree with that part of it. I did catch that at the end. So yeah. great. <laughs> Thank you. Well, thanks for um, waiting and then um, you know adding your um, opinion because it's good to hear neighbors are interested. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's a beautiful building. Yes, it is. Great. Okay. Thank you. So is that the last public person for this? Yeah, yeah. Um, so would anyone like to move that we close the public hearing? So moved. I, I propose that we close the public hearing. Any second? Okay, Robin seconded. So all in favor of closing the public hearing, we can just do a show of hands. Okay, great. We now, we'll go on. Huh? I'm sorry, we didn't get Pat's vote because she's not on screen. <laughs> Well, there we she go. wasn't attending at that point, so oh, okay, all right. still on mute too. So we're not really getting her participation until she okay. figures it out. Okay. Um, I, I need to apologize is. to everybody. I got hacked today. We know. So struggling with my iPad, and I'm in a. It's it's uh, not something I'm used to doing Zoom on. So forgive me for, for all well, of this. Okay, that's out. okay. Okay, but you're I think here I'm now. Here to stay. Okay, great. We're moving on to the public meeting. So you're here in time for that. So Ben, do you have any announcements? <laughs> Back um, I do I do not. Okay, great. Preservation plan, outreach plan, and surveys. So has everyone looked at that online? Um, uh, let me bring it back up for myself or Ben, you can put it up for everyone. So many documents open. Yeah. Um, Okay, okay great. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's the questionnaire. And then there's the list of people that she's going to talk to. And some people she already has, it looks like. Um, I don't think she has. I think I think she was just making notes of like what she might oh, okay. talk to them about. Other than us. Yeah. 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 Um, okay. So yeah, I can just give a little bit of background. The survey um, obviously is an important part of the preservation plan because it's you know one of the only ways that uh, they'll collect information kind of from the broader community. Um, and so you know one thing that we are conscious of is trying to replicate the 2005 survey, you know, mm -hmm. to the extent possible, just so you can kind of do that, you know, direct comparison. Um, to show, you know, how people, what people's thoughts were. And, you know, right. I guess it was actually 2004 that the survey was probably run mm -hmm. uh, and to 2022. So um, some of the questions, I think, especially with kind of like the meat of the survey, like four, five, six are taken from the um, 2005 survey. I think some of these other questions are... Um, are just kind of like added kind of around the edges, if you will, just to kind of collect more demographic information about people. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think we're kind of looking for feedback about, you know, should we change any questions? Should we add any questions, take away any questions, um, you know, change the format at all? And just so you know, this will be, um, a, it, it'll be both a per available via paper and a digital format as well through our like engage Amherst platform so it'll be and it's going to all the people she cited is it also being sent out generally in the mail or yeah so it, this will be sent out not necessarily in the mail but you know broadcast to the whole community through the you know social media and, and okay newspaper so people and all can that. click on the link if they see it yeah yeah 
I noticed there's no question about outbuildings. It asks if you think your residence is historic. It says nothing about a barn or outbuilding. Is that something we could add? We are trying to bring awareness of outbuildings. Oh, yeah. Um, okay, sorry, people have, have their hands up and I'm talking. Um, uh, Becky, I think you were up first. Um, just on the list of possible outreach people and organizations, I, I'd like to suggest that at least the places of worship are added. Many okay. of them are historic. Um, and so I didn't the, see yeah. them. I, I might have missed it. Yeah. And also maybe the colleges that are in town. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they own a lot of have, They do. They have historic <laughs> buildings. Yeah. I thought I saw that, but maybe I'm wrong. I might have imagined it. Yeah. You're on here. Yeah, I saw that Becky had her own. Uh, Why is that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I thought maybe there's a professor at UNEF uh, <laughs> who shares my name. No. It's possible that's the intention. Yeah. I don't know. It might have just been a goof from the Historical Commission materials. Um, yeah, those are two really good suggestions, um, Ben, to pass yeah. along. Uh, Okay, uh, Robin. Thanks, Becky. Robin? Uh, could you want to pull the survey back up then? Yes. Um, so, in question two, uh, I think that we need to have um, uh, an I don't know uh, option uh, for things. I, I'm guessing there are people who don't know if they live in the National Register District or yeah. the Historic District. They might not even, they honestly might not even know. Yeah. So well, that they know whether they live in Amherst. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> and they know the state of their house, but everything else uh, is questionable. <laughs> but so adding, I don't know, to those um, questions, uh, I saw her note about adding um, uh, if you live in a historic district as a sub question. Um, I think that I, I would. I think that the if you go to the next page, this is kind of a related comment. Um, my issue is sort of with how things are worded. Yeah. Um, I think it's challenging to understand. I would be perfectly happy to volunteer to go through and and try to clean up some of the language that yeah. I feel like is problematic. Um, it's actually not. Um, uh, I, you know, um, let's say not neutral. Can you go back up to six? Sorry, I think. Yeah. Another area, like, you know, I don't know how many people are going to know about the state inventory of historic resources, which truly that should be macros. But anyway, um, the next page was particularly confusing. These. Yeah, I, I, district, I, I agree. Yeah, yeah district. I, I mean, I, I get, and I'm assuming this is like, I'm not sure if this is an old um, survey or, but I would be happy to volunteer to, um, to go over over it to um, you know suggest some wording so that particularly here like so that it's it, this this section I feel like because we're asking people to you know vote on whether they think these things are helpful you know I just filled out my uh, vote by mail ballot you have the whole big you know thing that explains all the particular stuff and then you have like a three sentence thing that says you know voting yes would <laughs> you know like that's kind of what I feel yeah. like here um, to maybe make the definitions easier to access. Yes, exactly. The, the definitions easier to understand and, um, you know, design district guidelines would, you know, blah, 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 blah. So, okay. Right. Yeah. So that's, that's, those that's are, those are my, my big comments. And like I said, if, if, I'd be happy to, to um, you know, go through and do a pass yeah. full comments and everything, if that's helpful. I'm sure she'd find it very helpful. Yeah. This is Shannon, right? Correct. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'll see her tomorrow. You know, I'm working for her, right? Right. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> oh, great. Yeah. Well, she can just dump some of the work on you. Great. <laughs> yeah. um, I think there's some, yeah, there's some. Uh, I mean, we're so used to these terms, like, I don't even think about it, but and somebody yeah, who but it, even, makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Like an over, I'm not, I, I didn't understand. I kind of understand what an overly district is. And I didn't really understand that particular wording. And I think the, you know, we have to really, 
make it easy for people who don't have a background in this to say, oh, yeah, that seems like a good idea, or that's not what I want. So, sure. okay. Okay, Start. great. Madeline. Yeah, um, let's see, can you hear me? I, let's see, I have um, some notes. Um, I think it's good to just consider the purpose of the survey. Um, you know, is this, I think this can be really useful for identifying the community's preservation goals and just the direction that we want the preservation plan to, to go um, and not necessarily um, to, to kind of boil down to yeah. what, what should be implemented in town. But, um, and I understand that we do wanna identify kind of the demographics of the respondents, but I don't, I don't know if we should emphasize, um, you know, residents and, you know, whether you live in a historic house, like how much does that matter to be in a, you know, to be um, a participant in the historic preservation process. And um, maybe that can go like later in the survey um, rather than be so prominent and upfront. Of, mm. um, maybe say something like, home or apartment building or something so that we make it clear we don't just mean private homes yeah maybe something like that right a older residence or we sort of assume it's a house but it doesn't have to be right right yeah that's true um and then um can you go up to question four yeah yeah Let's <laughs> here. Um, oh yeah, question four. I, I really like this for identifying the significant aspects of Amherst character. Um, some of these questions that we're ranking with one being the most important, and then just having to sort of identify one, two, mm -hmm. three, four, five seconds. Maybe I, do you? And this can be a discussion. Maybe we should have um, the respondent kind of identified maybe the four most important or just something a little bit easier to to use here rather than mm -hmm. 10 um, kind of rankings. Although maybe that would work. It depends on like the sort of interface for the survey. Um, and then question five, I don't know if designated is necessary for so it says how well do you feel um that are for preserving designated, designated historic properties right. i wonder if that's necessary because it's just older historic fabric would be something we want to protect um right like that without no yeah that designate the designation doesn't necessarily matter yeah maybe yeah, people um, won't know what is and isn't anyway. Yeah, I don't, right, I, I don't either. Um, and let's see. Oh, and then just, right, I, I agree with Robin with uh, question 10, especially some of the, the terms are a little, um, maybe need to be reworded or clarify, like redevelopment, um, mm -hmm. mixed use and pedestrian oriented, maybe that's a little vague. And yeah. environmental sensitivity could be maybe clarified. Um, and I would also be happy to help with this, but I think it looks it looks good. I think it could be really useful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the main thing is getting enough participation. Yeah. Yeah. I know I think it's a balance too, because if the more complicated it is, the more and the fewer people are going to respond. There's not so many people. Yeah. It feels very comprehensive to me. Um, yeah. And as I'm looking at it again, I, I actually think that a lot of the phrases, a lot of the titles in the um, survey are potential mm -hmm. topics we could all be writing about, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, in, in terms of just educating our neighbours and friends and colleagues and people in the area in the valley about you know what we think this means or why why we're particularly interested in you know determining you know how we go through talking about barns or whatever the the topic is you know 
Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Becky, you still had your hand up or is that again? Sorry. It's again. Okay. <laughs> it's again. Um, I just wanted to say, I definitely, yes to what Robin said and to Madeline. I know when I first read this and when I am given the questionnaire, those um, in addition to um, number four, ranking then number six and number seven, being asked to do that after number four, you lost me. My eyes were glazed there, mm. but I wouldn't have finished it. I, I really wouldn't. That's when I quit on stuff like this. Yeah. So, you know, I think you're right, Madeline. It's got to be, if we want lots of participation, it's got to be easier. Definitely. And maybe it'd be easier if instead of ranking, which I also find hard too, because you have to go over and over and over it to come up with your numbers. Yeah. Maybe it's yes or no, important. Yes, no, maybe, or something like that. Be faster and easier for people. Mm -hmm. Or choose yeah. the most, like the five most important here. Just yeah, okay. check the mm -hmm. ones that you think are the most important. Yeah, something like that. I agree. But I think I think like a ranking each thing, you know, more important, you know, less important, whatever, neutral. You know that might be that might be more useful mm -hmm. so that you don't have to think about all of them and yeah time. each one could have a cross from it box is very important important not so important not important or something like right. that yeah. you, that right. makes it exactly yeah i think that would be the best way to to handle it because that will develop a ranking mm -hmm. uh, based mm -hmm. on people's feelings without them having to sit there and think about it themselves yeah. Right, 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 right. Okay. I, yeah, I, I will say that all of you that asking the public to rank things by order is going to be, as Becky said, they're going to glaze over and they're not yeah. going to finish it. But if you have a box that it's important, less important, mm -hmm. uh, don't know, um, then at least it, it will, they will get ranked through mm -hmm. a process like that. Yeah, great. Okay, all really good suggestions. Thank you everyone for reading it so carefully. You covered all the things that I had thought about and some I didn't. So great. Oh, I, oh just one more I thing. Have, oh, sorry. Yeah, it's all right. Um, oh, just number okay. question 14, I think is just a really important question. I think that's really great to include here and what groups, areas, mm -hmm. um, maybe underrepresented and maybe other also what history is in town. Are also made yes, up yeah, which is something Becky's brought up. Yeah, maybe move that closer to the top in case people do run out of steam. Mm -hmm. So um, I might I'm going to see Shannon tomorrow, um, and then I I can talk to her, and then Madeline, if you and I would want to connect about, you know, maybe I we could pull this into a word document and do some review on it and move things around and create a draft of, of talking to Sh Shannon first, seeing what she wants to do. Great. Sure, yeah. We have not yet finished. Yeah, Becky's trying to yeah. finish. No, I'm sorry. Have one really minor issue, but it's important to me. I, you know, we're all asking to complete questionnaires constantly. Yeah. And if I get one and it says this will take you ten minutes, I am so much more inclined to spend ten minutes than to the unknown. Yeah. And twenty minutes later, I'm still, you know, in the middle of it. So I think it would be helpful. To just state how long it's going to take, roughly. Um, yeah, yeah, I know. With the uh, in the digital version, you can do like a status bar on the bottom, so it shows you mm. how much longer you have. Yes, um, yes and I then love for that. The, yeah, for the paper version, we can just say you know approximately. Well, in the paper minutes. version, you see how many pages are left. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But that's a good point, Becky. If you can gauge, you're more willing to undertake it. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, great. Well, thanks for passing along the information um, to Shannon, all of you, and for offering to work on clarification. I think it's going to be a really good tool. Yeah, yeah, and I think kind of I echo what Madeline said about kind of just keeping in mind what the purpose of this is. Like, do we do we really? Yeah, like just. I, I had written to Shannon too, like, you know, to what extent are people really going to know about, like, you know, the scenic roads and in town or like, you know, I don't know, some of this other like really specific stuff. And, you know, are we asking too much of people to like really identify all these specific tools or is it really about just identifying broader trends about, you know, what is important for you in preservation? Like, 
you know, such as the scenic views and stuff like that. Or um, so I, I I'm keeping that in mind as well. I, I think it's a good survey, but I, I might work with Shannon just to clean up. Yeah, like Robin and um, others said, the the wording and just making it a little bit more friendly, I guess, for the average. Person. Just remember so. that a lot of people who live in town don't only see this as, you know, they don't only look at a survey like this as their house and their street and their town. Yeah. They're also aware that we're a tourist destination and we're trying, we bring in all yeah. these and their parents. And I think most people have a broader sense of, you know, the way Amherst works, I'm hoping. Yeah. So. And I had one more thing too, in the process of, um, and this made me think about it, um, it's important to be able to collect the data from the survey. So they should be designed in a way that it's easy. I mean, digitally, that's one easy way. But if we're going to do paper, which we probably need to do for some folks, we have to design it so that it can be looked at and then compiled easily. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, so having too many different kinds of rankings and stuff makes it hard to grab the data yeah. here, yeah. I mean, we could even put it together as a, in a form for data entry because it's gonna have to be transferred to data. So we could design it as a data entry form and people would fill in boxes, check boxes. Robin? I did, I did a um, survey this summer for um, historical commissions in Berkshire County you do, a, I don't know what platform the town uses, but I know that when you do a Google form survey, um, it's pretty easy to just um, basically just print out, you know, in the form, format that, that you've written it in. And then it's pretty straightforward. <laughs> so you design the digital and then the paper kind of comes from the digital to mirror it. Good. Okay. Well, you can talk to Shannon about that too at work. I will. Yeah. Well, actually, I think I have to take the pen because if the town uses a different platform. <laughs> We'll figure that out. Yeah, but yeah, well, it's nice to have an inside um, line here with you. <laughs> good. Okay, um, I think we've come to some good ideas yeah. here and plan. So was there any public comment on this, do you think? Is there anybody waiting to talk about this? No, no one, not even Hilda's here, so. Wow, uh, nothing else either. Yeah. Okay, there's one unanticipated item I wanted to bring up. It's something that those of you who've been on the commission a long time may remember, most of you will not, but you may have heard. Um, Jane Wald received a letter yesterday because um, the person who sent it thought she was still chair. So she um, forwarded it to me and we talked about it today. It concerns the library renovation and it comes from Sarah McKee, who is a former director of the library who has been opposed to the renovation and is part of a group that has been um, trying to stop it, um, well, as long as I've been on the commission. And um, she has been um, sending letters to the Massachusetts Historical Commission to protest that um, some of the laws are being broken by Amherst and the library by not um, supplying a certain, uh, certain kinds of information um, that are required for the MHC to have. And um, it's she is a former attorney or she is an attorney and she um, believes there's a breach of contract and that um, the state should take the money back that's been offered. Um, this has been going on a long time. Um, the plan um, for the library has not fully gelled yet. And so actually um, it, it ha it's been too early to actually convey that information. Um, but um, her the, the, the issue she hinges everything on is that it's supposed to be done in a timely manner and it's been six years, partly because of COVID, partly because her group made the um, town council take a revote on this. Um, so a lot of things have slowed it down, but it's true that it's been that long. However, um, we are one of many recipients. Um, it, this, this letter was copied to the governor, um, the senator, 
representative, town council, board of trustees, us, the town manager, the library director, the finance director, and then the architects and um, design firms. So everybody has gotten it, but this is, we, we used to get thick packets from them. We've seen this for a long time and we just have always, um, we have never responded because we just felt that the town and the library were moving along appropriately and that this wasn't an issue. Um, Jane and I talked today about the fact that really it's still the case. Um, they're getting closer and there's no reason to really give this material many, many times, just wait until it's actually ready and we're getting closer. But we are the um, holders of the preservation restriction. So we have a particular obligation to um, make sure that the preservation restriction is upheld. And um, for that reason, um, Jane has talked in the past to Paul Bockelman and um, the um, Austin Sarat, the chair of the library board and um, Sharon Sherry, the director of the library about this so that we were all on the same page and to make sure they were doing their best. Uh, but it's been a few years. So I'm gonna to talk to them all again. And, and we were thinking that we would um, just kind of develop a, a plan of um, not with dates, but just a sort of um, timeline of events that will have to happen. And at what point in that, this material will be provided as required by the MHC. Um, but I'm not gonna respond at this point yet. Um, we're going to wait a little and I'm going to work on it and then talk to the others and see, you know, how the response should be shaped. But as commissioners, I wanted to let you know, because as a, an entire commission, we hold the reservation, the preservation restriction, preservation restriction. Um, and we should, you know, I think we all need to know that this is going on, even though um, ultimately um, I'll be the one who responds if we respond. Yes, um, Robin. Um, thank you for giving that review. Um, I remember reading something, I think it was in the Emerson Indy a while back that Hetty had um, pointed out to me, which you know was the same, mm -hmm. the same basic message. I, I also had conversations with Jane about it. And, you know, I worked in community development where we had to submit project notification forms. Um, and I I guess my question is like this is such it's um how do i want to say this there's such a choose my words very carefully <laughs> there's such a level of concern from these communications that i feel um if it is misplaced you know the kind of repetitive nature of it it's um, a little bit frustrating to me that there is not some sort of calm, I wouldn't even call it a rebuttal, but response to say, these are valid concerns. Here's everything that's happening. We're doing everything that's required. The MHC is not, you know, those, those kinds of forms are so that, you know, you can't let something, you know, go happen over there. Um, you know, that process is about, things not getting by them. There's so many eyes on this project. And they have been in touch with everyone. And, and, and they have. And, yeah. yeah, so there's a constant dialogue back and forth. And I think that's my, you know, I can feel my blood pressure rising. That's my frustration <laughs> when I hear this kind of continued to be um, put out there in the public with, you know, people that I know who may not understand that what's happening isn't actually in violation of anything. And mm -hmm. so that's what I would say is that, you know, is there an appropriate point? It, you know, there's this question of sort of like, is something that's unfounded not worth responding to because it just fans the flames? Or is there a point where it would be appropriate to just lay out the facts of the matter that, you know, if people are hearing this, they shouldn't be concerned because you know, everyone is communicating with everyone else. Everything is above board. This is a normal part of the process. You don't submit a project notification form until you have, until you could, like you said, you have your project set so that it can be reviewed. You're not going to 
waste staff time reviewing projects over and over again. And many so, of the things yeah. that she states in the letter are abuses and um, problems with the design have changed. Um, the thing right. that we saw about what they plan to do is different from what she states the plan, one of the ideas they originally had. Right. So things are right. constantly changing. I think we should wait, though, until we do have sort of a general agreement among all these various stakeholders that this was sent to, I mean, locally. Um, mm -hmm. And then we can decide whether we do it publicly or whether you know one of these people says something. But I, at the moment, I don't want to start uh, a dialogue because I think, as you say, it will it will escalate. Absolutely. I wouldn't want to start a dialogue. I would just like to have a clear, calm and measured response <laughs> because, you know, I find it frustrating that there isn't um, a counter voice to say, you know, these people are making are th this group is concerned about legitimately concerned about a bunch of things that are part of this process. And we're here to assure you that mm -hmm. we're doing all those things. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I think then, once, we, once we get further into this, it's just been it's been frustrating because there was the revote and that whole thing was derailed. Well, and I think yeah. now we're finally getting back on. Right. They are making progress. The design and as as it gets further along, they can start telling the public, "Yes, things are moving along. Here we are, and everything's right. fine." You know, right, so. right. But yeah, I mean, even even with delays, there is a process, and I'm sure the language is, you know, that there's not a, a time deadline, and there are all sorts of processes that go on behind the scenes sure. that nobody sure. knows about. So yeah, I would, I, I I would I would welcome the measured response. <laughs> well, I'm I'm gonna work with people when I get back in November. So Becky, yeah, I just. Um, I, I am certain that everything's been done the way it ought to be, but I'm wondering, do we need to consult with the town attorney? In, in town what? With the what? The town attorney. Oh, no, I don't think we need to. I think, oops, sorry, my cat's sitting on the keyboard. Um, right. No, I, I think that um, if anybody, it would be Paul Bockelman, you know, and I would, I would leave, I would just, you know, sort of coordinate with that effort. Um, I know that we have a particular role because of the preservation restriction, which is, oh, sorry, my cat just decided to knock everything over. Um, but I think that can be rolled in with what's going on with the other people in town. Ben, if you have a disagreement, or you want yeah. to no, no disagreement. I was just going to add that, uh, you know, they were prepared to, the architects were prepared to present their, you know, uh, design drawings to us in August. And then uh, when they realized all the prices have increased, they kind of went back to the drawing board. And now, you know, that we've rescheduled it three times now. And I think, you know, last I heard, they're going to come in January. So yeah, those are part um, yeah, of the COVID I, delays. You know, I think at that point, you know, when, when we were preparing, yeah, yeah, when we were preparing for them to come in August, part of the conversation was like, you know, what you submit to us, you know, submit, you know, they they were expecting to submit it to MHC at the same time, just so everyone mm -hmm. is reviewing the same documents. And then, you know, we got derailed a little bit with the cost increases. So I, you know, I expect that they will submit to MHC what they submit to us. And for that matter too, there a lot of this project is also banking on them getting historic tax credits, um, which I actually don't know that much about. Maybe Robin does, but um, or Madeline, but uh, I know that is a very uh, lengthy review process and involves a, a high level of scrutiny as well. So uh, I have full faith there will be a lot of eyes on this project, so. Right. I I can't find my raise hand button on this, okay. <laughs> but but I have I I'm going back to what Becky just suggested. It, it only with the idea or the question that as the historical commission who does hold the preservation um, commitment and oversight, whether or not our our response to all of that needs to have a, a separate line. Um, it, it go, going along with the town and everybody else, but whether or not because of our special status relative to the library, whether there needs to be some recognition and response related to that. 
Well, I'll ask about that when I'm talking to the state, other stakeholders. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Okay. Anybody else? That was just an unanticipated item mm -hmm. in yesterday, but mm -hmm. I did want to let you all know that I'm going to be working on it in a little bit. Yeah. So. Um, I would just say two other unanticipated items. One is uh, we're preparing to put out like another RFP for the uh, more headstone restoration work at West Cemetery. So that'll right. probably, you know, we'll get someone under contract maybe by, for, you know, January or something, 23, and then they'll start in the spring. Um, and then, oh yeah, similarly that we have someone to replace the fence at West Cemetery um, Fitzgerald fence over in Florence. Great. And uh, yeah, that'll probably happen in the spring as well. Um, and then my other unanticipated item, oh, it was just kind of an update about the CPA projects. Oh, sorry. Uh, I about yeah, that. yeah, yeah. So I had, I had thought, you know, everything was due um, September 30th, but the projects have not been made public yet. There's um, So I, I was thinking we would, could review them at this meeting, but I didn't have access to all the application materials yet um but i think our, our next meeting is november 9th um and i think that would be an opportunity to review the projects at that point um yeah and ben and i talked about the fact that um it's not uh required that we prioritize and come up with amounts for each application we've just sort of done that in the past and that it might turn out because we're going to be looking at them a little later to be equally useful to simply write support a support letter where we could um, talk about all of them at once, but maybe you know say one thing is particularly crucial or we're very supportive or whatever, but without actually ranking and suggesting that we think it should be capped at this amount or that sort of thing. So it's a little less work and and maybe I don't know. You two of you have been on CPA, whether that would be equally useful to having us go through that process. I think that sounds great, actually. I think it sounds much more clear. Um, but that's because I'm a words person, not a numbers person, and I can't mm -hmm. think in numbers. You know, I, I can't. I mean, I can see the difference between a five and a one. Yeah. But it, it, it just doesn't compute when we're looking at things that have value added to mm -hmm. them in the way that CPA applications tend to. Um, yeah, I love that idea, Jan. Great, Robin? Um, I would just say that the ranking um, issue, uh, I mean, there are, there is a lot of discussion uh, because we never know how much money is we're going to have and how much money is going to be asked for. And so there really is a necessity of knowing like, okay, which one, you know, really has to, I mean, you know, if, the, if everything's equal, we can say, you know what, everything's equal. But if, if we feel like, you know, something needs to come before something else, if, if it's a question of when push comes to shove. Well, we then, can say that in the letter, yeah. I mean, we did used to know, we used to be able to calculate pretty closely what we were going to get. And we then, we went in and we fine, fine tuned each application's amount and everything to fit that. But, you know, we used to have three and four hour meetings on just that, like two of them. Yeah, I don't think I don't think fine tuning the costs. I mean, the costs are what the what the applicants bring forward. I um, can't remember why we adjusted amounts before. Sometimes that happens in the CPA meetings. But I think just getting it, you know, it's pretty easy to say, OK, we like all of these, which, you know, which feels like the most important. Yeah, and that, we know that question will come up, you know, and I'll be there having to say, which one? <laughs> you know? right. Yeah. So. I mean, I think we can kind of state our letter generally and send our rep way be with more detail. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. That's fine. Um, I mean, I don't think it will take much. I think they'll be what, you I know. I mean, look at this time. We're going to have all these, the ones that have been shown to us so far, they're all excellent. We haven't seen the final yeah. thing yet. They're all very necessary and they're all way over what we're going to be able to afford. So, right. Right. you know, I, yeah. I would rather let the CPA committee worry about the details of funding than us well, i think the funding is yes i think it's a question of priority is the, a different than funding yeah. 
But the other reason not to lick them tonight is because we don't have the finished packets yet. And I didn't want to base it oh, yeah. on, on what these people had come to us and asked advice about and then use that to measure their proposal. I want to see the finished product because I'm sure they have more information now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and if there's a need for like a site visit for any of them, I mean, I know we've, um, I was thinking even those paintings at the Strong House, like I have no idea what those paintings look like. It might be helpful. Um, well, if I'm supposed to write a letter of support, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm as an art historian. Yeah, yeah. or, um, you know, I think, you know, that maybe the churches or um, yeah. something like that, maybe, yeah, we could. Well, let us know and we can plan those in yeah. November then. Okay. Yeah. Okay, great. Anything else? No. Nope. I got the uh, I got the the barn the barn outbuilding proposals in there. Yes. Hey. Thanks, I did Robin. It. Thank you, Robin. Oh, yeah. I guess everybody doesn't know that I worked with um well she came and talked to us. Yeah. Um oh, that's right. Yep. Um I just forgot her name. Um Susanna, right? Susanna, thank you, yeah. Muskrat, who came and talked to us about the idea for the, the uh, stained glass tour. Um, Robin pointed her towards the Cultural Council and we did put together an application and turn it in. Um, so okay. we're hoping, hoping on that. I hope they're, you know, they don't offer much, but I think they probably aren't as inundated as CPA is. So I'm That's hoping a great idea. Thank you, guys. Yeah, and we need to do more of these uh, walks. So I'll probably be coming back to you after I'm off the off the commission. Uh, Send me to cultural council. <laughs> yeah, but I'll be asking you if you're interested in these. I'll be showing yeah. them to you. So because I'll ask for your sponsorship if I do yes, it yes. myself, right? Um, okay. Do we have a date? I think we do have a date for next. November seventh, I think. Ninth. Right. Wait, right. that's it's a night. The ninth. It's a Wednesday. All right, right. Thank you. Um, is that what everyone has to offer? Yeah. Yes, the ninth. Sorry. Okay, great. So is that still good for all? I know we yeah. were working around Thanksgiving and some people being away and this so this is per perfect. It's right the day before the first CPI meeting. Yeah. Okay, great. Good. Okay, so we can give you our general letter and our specific comments. Okay. Well, would anybody like to move to adjourn the meeting less than an hour in? I move. <laughs> anybody second? I guess, Becky, were you seconding? Yeah, that? I'll second that. <laughs> okay. Well, this is historic. This is a 54-minute uh, meeting. Just chalking one up there. Mm -hmm. I know we didn't have much on the agenda, but nevertheless, it's always good. Well so done, thank you all. I'm flying away tomorrow, but I will be back in November and um, we'll continue on. Have fun. Have fun. Thanks. Safe travels. Thank you. Take care, everyone. Okay. Bye. Bye. -bye. Thank well. you. Bye. Bye.